I should send you some cats roaring instead of music. Yes. You should. <laughs> so, uh, cats roar. Or do whatever you want. You're the producer. He told me he turned me down. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I heard you have. So. Yes, that's what I've been wanting. Oh, I saw something here. Are you coming to us or me or anytime soon? I was asking if he's going to start, start uh, the camera on me. Uh, hey, everybody. Welcome to Cat Chat. Hey, David. My name is David Lee Stanton, and that is Carol Baskin that you hear there. And you'll see her on one of our monitors right over here in a second. <laughs> Hello. Or five, <laughs> maybe 20 seconds. There she is, but she'll be full screen in a second. But uh, welcome to the show, Carol Baskin. Well, thank you, David. So nice <laughs> to be back with you again seems like a week goes by so quickly. Yeah, you know what, though? I was missing TV, though. I, I don't know. Something's addictive about it. I think it's these lights, really. Um, was it you You're I was addicted telling? to the lights? Well, here's what I think it is. I think it's like light therapy because everybody that does a show here really enjoys it, right? All the guests that do shows here, uh, after they're done, they're like, listen, that was one of the best things I've ever done. Oh, how nice. And it's, it's the way that these, these lights, it's like just a thing called light therapy, really, and they surround you in these, like, type of photo lights or whatever. And that's what it's like here in the studio. There's these really like big photo lights that surround you and bathe you in beautiful soft light or something like that. And I, I'm serious. You actually feel good when you're done doing a broadcast. It's weird. There's a lot to be said for light therapy. Yes, I agree. And I really think that's what's going on here. It's just, it's just a, like a, it's a, a, a happy thing that happens to be happening by the way so this is a bottle i got for carol because she's a big baby no this is <laughs> i'm just kidding no this is for my puppies right because here where's that other one, Ask carol which one she oh i know what carol would say because carol's smart like me so i gotta tell you what my husband did okay well that one's that one's probably unacceptable too Ask her if this one's okay oh, well i already know this one's i mean no this one is better well, anyways, my puppies, like, you know, my dog had eight puppies. My puppies. My puppies. My dog had eight puppies. So that's a lot of puppies for any dog to have to take care of. So, you know, I think that we as people, caregivers, should step in and try to, like, um, supplement the puppies with, uh, what do they call it, formula, for pu puppy formula, and a bottle and stuff like that, right? So he goes to the pet store and then tells the pet guy what he needs. And then he comes back with this bottle that's this big with a little nipple on it that's, like, for kittens. And I go, are you serious that the guy actually told you that? I go, that's not even good for, like, any kind of puppy. There's no puppy on earth that would be born <laughs> that could, like, do it on that, like, use that little nipple. So then I, like, freaked out about that. So then he goes and he buys... Miniature chihuahuas. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and, like, five seconds after they're born and for only about a day. Seriously, it was that... You know how small the ones for kittens are, right? Yeah, so then, we use those a lot. <laughs> so then he goes, so like now remember the dogs that I have are like pit bull mixes. So that, those are these big hunkin' dogs or whatever. So then, uh, so then he gets this one too, which is still kind of small, but he was getting better. I was like, no, you got to go get a big old baby, big old fat baby bottle. <laughs> yeah. That's the only one they had. Like one of those babies that you see with those carrot things, a big fat, well, you got a big I'm old gonna, bottle. That's what you need. I'm going to try that. Pink one, so you got this one, which would be a lot better. <laughs> and that's what, we're, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I wanted you to get all along. Okay. But I freaked out about him. Because, you know, I, I was telling him, I was like, listen, you got to understand. There's, yeah, I'm, I'm, well, there's, I'm okay. I go, there's, okay. there's an order of things in the world for me. Yeah. And it's uh, animals and gay life, then gay life television. No. No, it's gay life. It's my business and then animals and then humans. You heard. I'm sorry, people. I'm sorry. That's just the way I feel. So here you what go. What kind of formula are you feeding the puppy? Um, 
I'm Cat formula. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, what kind of, well, he asked, I don't know, because the guy gave him the wrong bottle. He could have no, gave him. gave me that stuff. I said, well, it has a puppy's picture on it. So it's puppy, it's puppy formula from, like, the, the pet store. That stuff is expensive. I know, it is. Man. It was like $25 for a little thing. They go through it fast. Ask her how many... Do they? I, I feel that that's a warning. Uh, ask her <laughs> since she knows about animals. Opposed to a good job, that's a warning. Okay. Uh, it goes from... Uh, uh, what do you... What you I want to know what she knows. Sam, it says on the thing how often to feed them. Anyways, I could get back to the Cat Chat show. It's not puppy show. So welcome everybody once again to Cat Chat. I'm David Lee Stanton. I find that we don't say our names nearly enough. That's Carol Baskin over there. She's the pretty one. <laughs> well, lots of stuff. Oh, well, apparently I don't know. I think you might be prettier than me, David. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can guarantee you that everybody's watching saying, no, Carol, he's right. <laughs> you are the prettier I think one. it depends on who you ask. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. A gay person would even say it. Well, anyways, um, uh, you all might have noticed that uh, that... It might not, hopefully it's not buffering today. Yay! So for one, we've added some new code to our experience. You know, it's something that we've been working on feverishly. Don't you all ever think that I just sit around and just be like, well, it's buffering. Oh, well, wait. <laughs> you know, I, I don't, I believe me, I don't. One of the f most frustrating things in the world is, is for video to buffer. It's like, it's like waiting in a checkout line. Yes. Yeah, it's like waiting in a checkout line that's not moving. Because the checkout clerk is talking to somebody yeah. about her home life. <laughs> oh, it's just like the other day, I asked uh, our tech guy there, we went to go get this coffee, not this coffee, but some coffee. And I don't know if the guy was being rude or not. There's a, a line behind us, a huge line, and the guy's sitting there telling us, oh yeah, you know, you come in here all the time for coffee, I'm going to throw you out a card, what's your name and all this stuff, so you can get a free coffee every five things. And I'm sitting there thinking, are you, are you serious that you're really doing this? <laughs> for, you know, and in, other, in other words, I forget what my damn point was. <laughs> the buffering. Is oh, okay, oh, so it's like, <laughs> I swear to God. So, well, that's what it's like. Yeah, the, the, the cashier just talking and talking and just, you yeah. know. So I understand. I feel your plight. And hopefully I have solved the problem through coding. Okay, it's for all you good. tech people. I'm so excited. Because some of these uh, animal people tend to be techish. So what the problem was was the HLS stripping, stripping, <laughs> switching, which is a form of, like, the way we broadcast over Roku and our website is called HLS strip, stri, stri, uh, switching. <laughs> so what it does is my servers make, for the signal here, they make about four different versions of the signal all at one time. And each one is at a lower, each one's, one's at the high bit rate, and then it goes down lower to lower bit rate. So then your player will automatically switch between those streams according to your bandwidth. So your end experience is that the video doesn't buffer. You know, one of the things I was noticing today, now that it's not buffering, is that it seems to go back and forth between being very focused and crisp and being kind of pixelated. So is it that is, kind of riding the bandwidth as far as what's available to it? Yes, that is exactly what's, that is, that is the HLS kicking in. Because nice. what it's doing is, it's saying, you know, your bandwidth is fluctuating right here. So when you're seeing it clear, that means your bandwidth is going pretty good. But then when it goes to pixelated, that means something, you know, maybe somebody logged on somewhere or something and it dropped your bandwidth a little bit. So then it, on the fly, went to the other stream. That's a lower stream, which is going to be pixelated. And it went to that. So it did all that in real time, just, excuse me, just to keep your uh, experience buffer free. So well, aren't you something? <laughs> so well, it's been it's supposed to be. It has been doing that all along. Um, just the coding that I had before was uh, like you know, it's the, the code to write for Roku's and all that, and to do this HLS streaming is like this long. Like it, it's like papers long, or for you to print it all out, and you mm -hmm. can't get one thing wrong in it. You can't have like a, you can't have a comma wrong or a or parentheses because you know how coding is. Yeah. No, you can't even have spaces wrong. Mm -hmm. Seriously, like they call them carriage returns. So, so I'll, I'll be honest with you. I went to a professional service. <laughs> I 
I mean, I, you know, I tried to, so I went, I, I broke down and I went to a professional service to have our channel rewritten, rewritten. And, uh, well, it worked. Well, good. So good. I think it'll be a much better experience. Well, yeah. So I invite you guys to please, in the meantime, oh, I don't, I don't mean to draw attention to my other station, but you all know I do the other station. Um, but if you find us on Roku, that can, that's an example of what's to come for wild animal television. See, I wanted to make sure everything was really secure and nailed down before I started the Roku experience with wild animal television. Because that one's going to be, like, very popular, I believe. <clears throat> so, you know, unfortunately, things take time to make and test. And, you know, I've, and I've, and I've, and I've only been doing this, like, super professionally for two months now. <laughs> You know. And we really jumped into it. You know, we had this idea that we're going to do this show, and it was like, okay, how about we do this next week? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, you know, I didn't. Prior to me becoming, um, when you're when you're less professional, I'll be honest with you, it's easier to do television. You know, when you're just throwing up a webcam, and getting on your camera, and talking to somebody via Skype, that's pretty easy. To, it's not super easy to do, but it's easier to do. You know, but now, now there's a whole bunch of variables. You know, now we have a large studio, uh, cameras. You know, everything's professional grade, and everything takes a whole bunch of different parameters to adjust. But the resulting thing is a much nicer broadcast. Yes, it's worth it. Yeah, it's worth it. So when it works, it works. But we will be masters at it when we're all through. <laughs> if we get sponsors, if we can keep right. going. Well, our sponsor, you know, we, we, we kind of official. Oh, the new thing with the Roku is now we're able to have a banner ad right on the, like, screen within the Roku. Like, when you go to our channel, you can see actually a banner ad that's for sale. And then um, we also have pre-roll ads that right before, which is before used to be impossible to do with the live broadcast. Um, so now we have pre-roll ads before our broadcast and actually after if you want it that way too. And we can have a few pre-roll ads. So, uh, uh, but we had to wait for our LLC and all that kind of stuff to be completed and bank work and all that kind of stuff. Be, like you just can't like just sell an advertisement to somebody. I mean, you can, but that's not the right way to do business. You know, to do business on a long-term basis, you have to have a more professional approach about it, which means having all your accounts in order proper invoicing, proper billing, you know, you under, you completely understand this because you run like, god dang, four or five businesses, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so you understand all that, you know, and, it's, and this is my first official business, business, so, I, you know, I'm still learning a lot of this stuff too, and, you know, it's a, it's a big, big thing <laughs> to do, everything is now, but yeah. I love it, I love every minute of it, I wish the days were longer. Really do. Like we were on another planet and had longer days. <laughs> or else I could stay awake longer. Yes, that would be wonderful. I just, I so envy these people that can get by on four hours worth of sleep. You know what? I've been getting by on like six hours. I'm not Ooh. kidding you that I actually go home from here. I get home like around 1 a.m. And mm. then I, um, then I go to bed. And then actually I don't get to sleep till about around two or three. Because, you know, I got the puppies and all this other kind of stuff. And then, um. And then I get up like around eight, and I get I come back here and I start all over again. I do that day after day after day, <laughs> and I love every minute of it. <laughs> I do. I don't know why I do. I must be I don't know something in me that makes me have energy. I certainly don't have fatigue syndrome, or maybe I do. I don't know. <laughs> okay, so now on with the show, everybody. That was what we call cat chat because Carol and I are two cats, cool cats. <laughs> Okay, we need now, cat names. Yeah, we do. What the thick is that? Um, okay, like we said, that you can now see the show notes on the internet. And how can they do that, Carol? They can go to bigcatrescue.org and in the search bar, type in cat chat and it'll bring up all of the cat chat show notes. Cat chat by chat. Date. Oh, that's great for yeah. me and for you. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, that starts. Okay, that's now. Now, a new rescue of a wee of a six-week-year-old baby bod bobcat. And yeah, that's the, she's so cute. Where and uh, if you can go ahead and show that on the screen, we have the colored version. I have the black and white version here. Look at that. 
He has now, two pictures of this cute little bobcat kitten. I'm, you know, it's refreshing that you rescued a bobcat because we know, as we talked about last week, um, that they hoax bobcats out of the forest or wherever they're at, woods, and uh, kill them. For yes, and right fur. now in California, the, I'm hearing feedback again. In California, they just had some action on that bill to try and protect the bobcats as they come out of the forest. It passed the committee that it's in front of currently, and now it's yeah. gone to the Appropriations Committee. And since there's probably not going to be much in the way of um, cost involved in enforcing that, mm -hmm. I would hope that it would pass the Appropriations Committee as well. So I'm really hoping this year that in California, at least, the bobcats will get some protection in the wild. This poor little bobcat kitten that you're looking at here, the picture of her, is um, apparently she started out somewhere up around Gainesville and must have been orphaned. She was sent to a rehabber, and the rehabber does that picture again, like please? squirrels and birds and stuff. She doesn't do bobcats, and so she's got no facility to be able to take in a bobcat. Right. She sent it to another facility, oh and they had no way that. to deal with this bobcat because she is wicked. This cat is so bobcatish. She oh, is, good. Well, she's good everything thing. a bobcat should be. And they were good. like, you can't deal with her. <laughs> so we picked well, her up. As well, you shouldn't deal with her unless you're, I mean, I don't right. know. Yeah, I mean, a bobcat should be all wicked like that. Good. And that, hopefully that means, they, are you going to rehab the bobcat? Yes. Yes. She's in our cat hospital right now because mm -hmm. she's tiny. And she would fit right through the bars, I think, if we tried to put her in the cage outside. So we've got to fatten her up a little bit, give her her vaccinations, uh, make sure she's good and healthy. One of the things that was going on at both of the other facilities is that she had just raging diarrhea. And they said the more that they tried to handle her, the worse it was. So they think it was stress-related. Here, we're not going to be handling her at all, except you know when we actually have to squeeze her and give her the vaccination. But um, we have it set up so that we'll have a webcam on her. Act this, she likes it really dark in the enclosure where she is. Right. So the webcam that I have that can actually see her in the dark is one that you have to log in with your um, email address. So if anybody wants to watch her, if they would send me an email at cat at bigcatrescue.org. That's cat, just like C-A-T, at bigcatrescue.org. Let me know you want to watch the webcam, and I'll send you the invitation it's a special type of webcam, and you'll be able to see her pretty well, even though it's really dark where she likes to hunker down in the little box that she's hiding in. Well, that's great. I'm, you know, and, you know, I feel if a cat makes it to your place, that's like, that's like going, that's like winning the lottery for a cat. <laughs> People say that all the time. <laughs> I mean, that, seriously, or that's like a poor cat child becoming rich all of a sudden or rags to riches or whatever you know it's like it's a really really good thing because what that means is uh long term that the cat has a much better chance long term because yeah. carol and all the wonderful people that work at big cat sanctuary ensure that they don't just you know think about getting the cat out of the sanctuary or i'm sorry facility they uh think about the long-term care of it so which a rehab would be the best thing for it Oh, yes. I mean, it's always kind of one of those bittersweet moments when we release a bobcat because we're so happy that this cat is finally getting a chance to live free. But we worry, too, because we know it's going to be a tough life out there. But we never even have to think about would the cat choose to go free because all you have to do is open the door and they will show you that they would much rather be free than have their meals delivered to their door. You know, speaking of cats running free, <laughs> yeah. y'all remember I was talking about my cat that got out and that I said that with the power of attraction that I could probably will her back. And, I'm here, and, you know, and I'm always preaching to you that the power of attraction works and stuff like that. So I'm here to announce that it does work, okay, because Yay. she came back, all right? She was as skinny as like, oh my gosh. Like, she lost a lot of weight. <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> me, me, me. But uh, she did come back. My neighbor called me and said, hey, is this your cat under my car? And I was like, yes. I knew she'd come back. So I went out there, and the other, she's like with some other cats that were, like, keeping her contained or something. And uh, so I got her, and I brought her in, and uh, she ate a whole bunch. Oh, right. Wow. And then I was like, you know, I know you got to pace those type of things, you know, because they can, like, they'll probably just throw it all up. So you've yeah. wasted all your food. So, you know, I paced her. But then she had this, and then I was feeling her, she had this lump in her stomach. 
And I was like, oh my God, it's her spleen or liver or whatever. It's some Please sort of. she's not pregnant. Well, no, because she can't. No, because she was, she was the one that was taken to be fixed, and the vet said, was she already fixed? Oh. Because she okay. had no parts or something like that. So, but she goes in the heat anyways. Um, oh, so, it, so the slump or whatever, I'm feeling it, I'm feeling it. So here is that she just ate a lot, and it finally went through, and she's nor, you know, feels all normal and everything. Oh, good. But yeah, because I willed it, I was like, "Oh, I'm attracting that. That's there's not that. That's not something wrong with her organs." <laughs> <laughs> and then it went away. And then I, I so I'm telling you guys, when 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 she got lost, I kind of like, the, I knew that I was, I was gonna try. I said Shane that I was gonna try, but I was like, "Listen, I'm gonna use the power of attraction to make her come back, to help people understand." Because I, I try to spread the word about the power of attraction. I should be the church of attraction. <laughs> and, you know, and that's, that's true that it works. Now, watch, I'm going to will all my puppies get homes. That's a good thing to okay, focus now, on. Now, there are some heroes amongst people, and then there's some heroes among animals. And our next story is about a cat that's a hero because, you know, some cats really shine through, especially when they have kittens and stuff like that. There's something about that maternal instinct so if we could show the next cat on the screen and now first of all i'll just give you a little let me give you the tragic stuff first somebody hit this cat with a two by four in its head and knocked its eye out so if we could show that picture right and then she went and had kittens because nobody not only did they knock her in the head but they didn't feel like that she needed to be fixed either or else if they, she's going to be fixed, they didn't, or say they weren't going to fix her, they didn't keep her in an area where she couldn't get pregnant. But and she but, had this huge splinter stuck in her eye, and the eye had oh grown over God. it. It was just awful. Oh. And so, um, so we... So, tell us, yeah, tell us. Well, first of all, let's start from the beginning. What ha You're sitting around in your lovely office there, that you deserve a bigger office, by the way, <laughs> and you get the phone call. Or somebody reports you how that happens. So let's start from there. Uh, with this cat, I'm thinking I was taking some kittens back to the Humane Society of Tampa Bay. We do foster kittens. And so as soon as they get to be two pounds, we take them back to the Humane Society. They fix them, and then they adopt them out. So I was taking a load of kittens in, and they said, hey, we've got this mama cat that just got abandoned at Animal Services, and she's got a litter of five kittens. So we brought her home. Um, she... Like I said, she really took excellent care of those kittens. Right. The Humane Society went ahead and removed the eye because the eye was just too badly damaged. There was no way that it was she was ever going to have sight in there <laughs> again. And it had to be it. painful, too. Oh, my God, yeah. Imagine that something in your eye that you never get out. Oh, oh this poor cat. And so, you know, being that she was at animal services, she was deathly sick. Her kittens were all sick. And the interns had to, this cat, everybody said this cat was feral. Mm -hmm. And so what happens with a feral cat a lot of times in fostering programs is that they will um, hope that the mother will continue to nurse the kittens until they're old enough to place, but then the mothers end up being euthanized because nobody wants to give a home to a feral cat. And so what our interns did is they said, you know, we, we're going to do everything we can to save these kittens. They even had to tube feed the kittens because they were so sick they wouldn't eat. And they have been working with Sierra to get her to trust them so that they can touch her and pet her and she'll actually even sit in their laps now on the couch. And so here's a cat who, you know, had the worst of life imaginable right. and was abused by people and was looking at being killed after having delivered these kittens and taken such good care of them while she was going through all that. So I'm so happy that our interns were willing to take the extra time to try and give her a second chance. And I, I think it's going to work. I've got some people that are actually volunteers here who are interested in coming out and meeting her and seeing if maybe she would fit into their home. So I'm, I'm so excited for Sierra. Oh, my gosh. You know, that, like that's, um, I love when uh, animals that had a bad experience get a good ending, you know. And sometimes the cats are, like, cats are resilient. Like... Yeah. Um, it, you know, and that's, I'll tell you one thing, that's no reason to abuse them or anything that, not only they're resilient, but I believe they also probably remember stuff too. You oh, know? sure. And that's why it's so hard to gain her trust now, because she knows what people can do. 
Oh, uh, our and our uh, our set producer said he was crying as you were telling that. <laughs> well, well, I hope she uh, continues to uh, do well, and we will hopefully hear back more about her again. And I'm so excited to announce that Julianne finally found a home. It's easy to find homes for our kittens because the kittens are just, you know, they're so cute and they're so well socialized. But the mother cats, sometimes like Sierra, have baggage and yeah. people don't want adults. And so uh, the Humane Society just announced in their newsletter that they found a permanent home for Julianne. And so we're all just over oh, the moon yeah. happy about that. Wow. You know, in your business, there's highs and lows. How about some yeah. mediums? A medium would be fine, right? <laughs> a week of medium seriously well that's good well um you know in this world of internet we all go to the internet for just about everything shopping and sadly you can even get um animals off the internet which hey if you remember when my puppy had oh, when my dog had puppies i said i'm not going to put any ad in the newspaper or anything because I don't think that's the way that you should distribute animals. So, but some people have even gone to the, um, oh, I'm sorry, we'll come back to that Hitler thing. But some people have even gone to the extent of posting um, an ad on Craigslist for a truck. What was it? A stolen truck? And it just happened to have tigers and Cubs well, there was actually two different stories. The Craigslist post, there were two, we just get so many crazy calls from people. And one was somebody said, hey, there's somebody trying to sell or give away a tiger cub on Craigslist. And the person is in Jacksonville, apparently, Jacksonville, Florida. Do you have that image of the cute little cub? Uh, yeah. Do you have that image, right? Um, yes, that is correct. Thank you, sir. And it says, hi, my baby tiger named Chip must find a new home. My mom got him for me in Africa a few months ago, but I'm moving to Vegas this week because I got a job as a showgirl, so I don't think Chip will like an apartment in Vegas. And it's like, this is just wrong on so many levels. What on earth is this person doing with a tiger cub? How did that come from Africa? Tigers aren't even native to Africa. And so that's a lie. What are they doing putting them on Craigslist? We all know where, where, where is she from? Jacksonville, Florida, it says. Okay. I was going to say, I know some places where she probably could have got one just same, same day delivery. Yeah, well, it could well have come from there as well. It could have well have gone from there. That's true. Um, well, And then the other wacko call that we got, somebody calls the gift shop and they said, I'm a tiger trainer, and I have a whole trailer load of tigers in my act. And she said she was in Florida, too. Mm -hmm. And so she said, uh, somebody stole my, my trailer, and it's full of my tigers, and I need your help to try and find my tigers and get them back. And we were like, no, <laughs> we're not going to help you get tigers back for the circus. I'm sorry. We're calling the Florida Wildlife Commission <laughs> to see if they can figure out where this missing load of tigers in a trailer is. And we also called them about the situation on Craigslist because... They're the only ones that can really do anything about it. We have no police authority. Oh, my gosh. So do you think the trailer thing was real? I don't know. Why would somebody make up something like that? Uh, uh, look, I'm like speechless. <laughs> <order because, laughs> You're speechless. Because <laughs> here's what I know what happened. It's probably true. And the people who steal vehicles tend to be shady thuggish, whatever, I hate to say that, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, and this, you know, not all, not all car thieves are that way, but most of them are, <laughs> so if they, in my opinion, um, if they stole that and found it full of tiger cubs, they either A, sold them, killed them, or distributed them up again, you know, sold them for whatever, who knows. So she said this was a performing act, so I'm thinking 500 pound tigers. I mean, imagine you steal a trailer and you open it up and you got a whole trailer load of 500-pound cats. Now what are you going to do? Well, I think the people who steal things like that, especially if they're still in a big old trailer that's going to be valuable, what they simply do is shoot the thing to them, right? Now, the problem also comes in disposal. How do you dispose yeah. of big cat bodies? Well, probably the same way they dispose of human bodies. 
I mean, you know, uh, it's probably easy. See, see, people, this is the tragic stuff that goes on in the world. With uh, that's why we do this show. This show isn't, you know, this show isn't about how beautiful Carol Baskin is. <laughs> Let's embarrass her. Now, this show is about bringing awareness to you about cats, big cats in general, wild animals, but with the focus on big cats because I'm telling you, they have a bad plight. Always stuff happening to them, always, constantly. It's, it's tragic. And the only way that you're going to know about it is to know, is to learn about it. But unfortunately, you know, if you're anything like me, uh, you know, I, I, I like to know about animal abuse, but I, I can't watch it because it physically, I can't sleep. It physically bothers me. Yes, it makes me more aware, but it, it's, it's very tragic to me to see that. So what we're trying to do is bring awareness to you without shocking you. You know, we're going to shock you. Because we're just going to tell you the truth, but you know we're not going to show like a video of of a cat being skinned alive, which does freaking happen. Okay, so 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 this is the best way we think to bring awareness to you. Because if it, if you get all tragic stuff like that, people won't watch you. If I can't I can't watch those shows, I turn them off. I'm glad they're there, but anyways. That's why I'm really glad that this is a weekly format that you and I have because we have a, a monthly e-zine that goes out to people, the Big Cat um, Advocate, and then we have a quarterly newspaper that goes out, but every week we have so much stuff that we never even cover all of it on this show because there's always so much stuff happening with Big Cats. Oh, I love uh, what um, you know, like we said, one of the one of the important things that we do is bring awareness um, another way to bring awareness would be which would make a good billboard is if we could show this next picture of Hitler petting a cub is that what that is? yeah a tiger a lion cub a lion cub so there isn't that amazing? I mean as far back as the time of Hitler people were doing these photo ops and Pay to play sessions with cubs. Well, see, and that, it's still happening, right? And and you know what? Hence, the unfortunately, our history, <coughs> uh, unfortunately, our history um, is one of the things that the people who promote breeding and stuff like that use as a reason why they do it, because they say, "Well, we've been we've been humans have been uh, doing you know." basically exploiting cats, big cats, for since we've been humans, since the Greek like that's times. that's an excuse for doing it. Yes, yeah, I know, since the Ro you know, Roman times, Egyptian times, ancient times, and they're absolutely true, we have been. But also, I think humans have proven, at least in a few areas, that we have evolved out of certain things and don't do them anymore because we know that they're stupid. You know, we don't. And if um, there was ever a person on this entire planet that you would say that person didn't have one redeeming good quality, and here he is petting a lion, and it's like, do you really want to be that guy? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. No, I don't want to be that guy. Amazing. Now we've all been. We all know what it's like to go on vacation, and have fun, and go running through the field. We can't run no more, so the sun just bakes us. We just fall down. But not all animals, especially animals in captivity, do, do not always have that experience. And some animals deserve that experience. So Carol Baskin over there and everybody at Big Cat Rescue are working on a cage. Uh, I hate to call it that cage because it's going to be so large that a cat can just walk and walk and not run into another cage, not run into a barrier. Um, and the, uh, that, that, that enclosure is titled Vacation Rotation. So, Carol, if you could give us an update on that enclosure. We've been working on this enclosure for quite a while because it's the most expensive thing we've ever tried to do for the cats. I know, right? And it will run us, um, you know, I was figuring in, if you even figured the land involved, because it's two and a half acres, it's going to be like a half a million dollar cage by the time Jeez. we're done. But the idea is for these big cats to have a space where they can actually see the stars at night without a roof over their head or without cage wire over their head. 
They can watch the sun go up and go down. They can watch the birds fly over. And I've been so um, yeah, look at that. Uh, distraught, so hoping to get this cage done before Flavio, our oldest tiger, in fact, the oldest tiger in the world, we want it to be done in time for him to actually be able to use it. And another cat that I was really hoping was going to be able to have access to this enclosure was Sarmoti. He was did. another one of the circus tigers, and he died last week. And mm. so it just made it even that much more um, pressing to me that we get right. this enclosure done so that Flavio has that chance before he dies of old age. How does, um, um, you know, not to, like, really ask about that, but I'm just curious, like, is the death of a tiger like a throw of, you know what I mean? Or do they just, do they die in their sleep? Or do you, are they assisted in their death? I mean, how does, how does that go? Well, it, it could go a number of ways. We have had cats that have had like a, a seizure and died immediately. This cat was a very old circus tiger and he was sleeping all of the time, which is what the older cats do. In fact, a lot of times we just stop and stare at him. It's like, is that cat breathing? Yeah, right. And I know. <laughs> we watch for a while. It's like, yeah, he's breathing. Okay. So and then we wait, make sure he gets up at dinner time. But um, that's fine. You know, that's that's a natural progression. As we get older, we sleep more, and then we pass. Away. Hopefully, we pass oh, away. Oh yeah. Oh, please let that happen. In my, I hope that's the way I go for sure. But in Sarmodi's case, um, because he's still owned by the circus, he's only boarded here. We don't actually own the circus tigers. They have their own vets, and their own their vet said that they wanted to take him up to Gainesville to see if there was anything that they could do for him to improve his quality of life, which at his age, there was nothing that they could do, and they chose to euthanize him. But it was like, you know, I just I hated to see him go because it's like, oh, if you could just hold on a few more weeks, he might get this opportunity that... He didn't get in the last 18 or 20 years of his life and unfortunately he didn't he didn't get to stick around long enough to see it done but the good news is that we're thinking we're going to get this thing done next month we're th we're about 30 feet shy of getting the third oh, wall done close. so we only have one more wall to get done right well you know hey everybody if you would like to you know we're not here to hunker up donations whatever anything like that but you know what I if you were wanting to donate, please go over there to Big Cat Rescue. Um, you can go to bigcatrescue.org and you can find out how to donate. That's one way to find out. Yeah, it's right there at the top right hand of every page. And uh, your donations, go, please. Let's get, I want to call him Flavio because we have David Flavio here, but let's get Favlio, Flavio. Flavio. <laughs> Wouldn't that be like, like, like a movie? You know, he's walking down, I hate, you know... He's just walking down, you know what I mean? He's just, I don't know, you see him walking in the sunset and he just walks on and on because he doesn't run a 2K. So, so hopefully, God, please let this animal get the experience of running, you know, going in there and being free. Please, the animal deserves it. It's just like, you know, but God has an interesting way of working. And he always get, you know, sometimes he does give the animals the last laugh or the last whatever. Just like my dog, Chin, that is deformed, got four or five deformities and castrated or whatever they neutered and still managed to have eight puppies produce eight puppies not even a normal dog makes eight puppies <laughs> <laughs> so like god gave him extra power even so <laughs> so <Puppy power. laughs> yeah so god please if we would like for you to if you're watching us <laughs> we would like for you to give debut <coughs> help help carol get funds to um get that cage completed so please go to BigCatRescue.org to, to do that. Speaking of going to BigCatRescue.org, you know, they're Big Cat Rescue, dot, Big Cat Rescue people. They're kind of tech savvy, too. And they, uh, they're modern. They keep up with the times. Hey, like, if you go there and go on a tour, you can wear, like, a, they give you these little headset things with a little earphone piece that goes in your ear. And uh, they could talk to you on the tour, and then uh, and then you could hear other stuff with your other ear, so you don't get ran over <laughs> or anything by like you a know, golf cart. A golf cart. Um, well, anyways, they also have an iPhone app, uh, soon to be available on Android. So that's the app right there. And how you get it is you simply go to the iTunes Store because apparently that's how you install everything on the iPhone devices. Yes. So you go to iTunes Store, search for Big Cat Rescue, and you'll see the app there. And it's free. Oh, I was going to trick him. I was going to say, guess how much? Oh, it no. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
Sorry, I blew it. Sorry. Uh, anyway, it's free, which is great. And, you know, by donating to them over there at BigCatRescue.org helps keep, um, helps keep the app free, to be honest with you. It helps build cages. It helps feed animals. And they, don't, they don't feed their animals cat food, cat chow, or whatever they call that stuff, kitten chow, or Purina. <laughs> they give them tiger food. We don't feed the Walmart diet either. <laughs> Excuse, yeah. Matter of fact, they feed human quality uh, meat. It's like in these tube things. Like, it's actually better. It's got all of the vitamins and minerals mixed into it. Really? Well, you know, if the end of the world comes. 15 a pound. Well, if the end of, uh, you know, you're set if the end of the world comes because you have all the protection of all the tigers, right? I guess. And you have oh, all that. Because they're such a great protector. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Honey, don't feed them. Don't feed them any of that. Wonderful meat for a little while. <laughs> I guess you that a zombie apocalypse. <laughs> I guess that I I'm sure that'll flare their tempers up a little bit, because hey, it says it in the Bible too. The the quickest, the easiest way to uh, calm the masses, or anything, especially animal, is through its stomach. You know, <laughs> if if you know when it comes down to it, if people have a choice between money and food. And, you know, it's the last day. If it's like, you know, apocalypse come, money has no, you know, it's all, food is the most important thing. So if your stomach is full, you tend to think better, you're nicer, and you're, you're not going to attack stuff. Don't you feel better after you eat dinner? Sure. <laughs> or breakfast, you know, a little cranky in the morning until you get something to eat. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> so go and get that um, iPhone app over there. Uh, find it in the i. Uh, oh. The Apple iTunes Store. Is that what they it's call really it? It's really beautiful. It has 105 of our cats on it with full, beautiful pictures of them. It has their their stories, both in text if you want to read it, or an audio file that you can play. And in the audio files, it actually has the sounds that the cats make in the background. And it's got you know birds chirping and crickets and music and very, very peaceful sounding music. Uh, audio to play and then there's actually a map of the entire property where you can see where every cat lives at the sanctuary well you know when it comes to android i'll show it to everybody hey uh, go get it if you don't you know if you have an android phone or device and you're waiting well anyways when it comes to that i'll show it to you all, all on my pad thing i don't have an ipad i just have a i have a nexus 7 I have two edits that I want to make to it, and then we'll push it out to Android. Oh, I'm okay. going to do a better icon. We did the lion icon, oh. and I saw that if you type in Big Cat into the search bar, it brings up another app that's like for children that has a lion. So I didn't want it to be confused with that. So we're probably going to do a, um, I don't know what we're going to do, maybe a snow leopard. Oh. Get whoever did, I don't know, whoever did the icon for our show. I, th I love that icon. <laughs> And whoever did, well, I know who did the icon for my other business, GLTV. You've seen that one, right? I like your new one. That's yeah. really nice. Who yeah, did that? Um, some girl. We hired her. We, we like, had it done. Hmm. Um, but it's, because I wanted to say what, you know, because I think we as gay people are equal to everybody else. So that's what the little equal thing in there is for. And then life. We're equal in life. And I'm all about life instead of. Uh, sadness and gloom. <laughs> so that's why I'm Gay Life TV. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, okay, now, um, speaking of life, sometimes the life can be taken out of you. <laughs> and uh, unfortunately, when you're dealing with big cats and you don't have proper procedures in the way, or else you uh, don't follow your own procedures, even one time. Things can happen to you. So, in a little world news about big cats, there's a, a mauling at an exotic feline rescue center. So, what's that all about, Carol Bassing? You know, just three months ago, there was an intern, I think a 21-year-old intern, who was mauled to death by a lion out in California. And then here again on June 21st, there was another exotic feline rescue center in Indiana that has... I'm thinking 300 or so big cats, and yeah. she oh, apparently didn't shut the door completely or the door didn't hold 
And so she was inside cleaning the cage and the tiger got loose and was dragging her around by the head. And they had to wow. shoot the cat in the face with uh, water hoses. They tried luring the cat away with meat. And they were finally able to get the girl out of the cage. But she's in critical condition. Oh, she and lived I understand through that. she's got a bunch of broken bones. Good. I wish, well, here's me good. <laughs> but you remember, if you watched last week's show, I expressed my interest in seeing humans tortured by animals. <laughs> Not their caregivers. Did they get, you don't it, want did that they get it off film? <laughs> <laughs> I know, but it's sad. Well, you know, oh, and I see she's twenty-one years old. How too, good of so a caregiver? Very young women. Right. We don't know how good of a caregiver she is. True. She could have been like yeah. you know. She could have. Been, I mean, like you know, cats. No, I don't see your cats trying to kill you, Carol. But I don't see you up in your your cages either. <laughs> You know, if, but, if there was a faulty door and I went into a cage, the cat would kill me just like they would kill anybody else because they can't help themselves. That's what they are. They're apex predators. And they may not actually be trying to kill us. They're like, oh, I want to play with you. And they'll just, just drag you around. And, and Well, it's just dead. natural to shake you and kill you. It's just, that's like, it's yeah. like us uh, playing with a toy or something. It's just like, it's like natural to get a ball and pick it up and throw it. And, and you know, that's just what it's, yeah, they're right. But, you know, I, I suspect that there's always cause and effect for stuff. So I expect that something, you know, the cat just didn't walk up to her. If she had been following the proper procedures, that could not have happened, correct? If, the, if she was following the proper procedures and if the facility was safe. I, I don't know what kind of condition these doors are in. I don't know how they shut them, how they lock them. You know, can the cat just spin the, you know, if it's one of those things where the hook goes down over the pole like that. I've seen cats just spin those things completely around and not through them. So I don't know what their facility actually looks like when it comes to shutting a tiger out. But apparently it was not safe enough. Now, um, <coughs> excuse me. That's all right. Um, although you sound better this week. I do. I'm getting over it slowly but surely. Um, you know, we had talked about... Cats, in general, more than just uh, tigers and lions and all that stuff. There's also, in that family, servals. And for some reason, people think that servals make good pets, that they're not in the same ballpark as having a tiger, but that's exactly what it's like. Uh, Those things can jump 12 feet straight up. What I know. What cage are you going to keep them in? They're, like, maybe worse than a tiger. Um, you know, trying to keep them. They're, like, imagine having, like, a crazy... Uh, you don't get a no serval. Well, anyways, there's some people in New York, uh, what was it, uh, Western New York, and their serval got out and uh, was lost for three days. And then somebody uh, set some food out to lure it in, and uh, they did lure it in. How, then the USDA got the animal, thank God. Let's hope they do the right thing with it. Not accusing you, USDA, I love you. And... Uh, but the the USDA is, is looking for the owner. So if you know the owner of this cat that got loose in Weston, New York. Yeah, apparently Westtown, what happened was the owner put the cat in some kind of flimsy wire cage and then just dumped it off at this wildlife center. What? And so it escaped from the cage before the wildlife center found out that this cat had been left out front. See, where was that tiger that bit that lady's head off? The one in... <laughs> no, I mean, no, that, that where, we, where, do you, where is it when you need it? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> she was, where was she? She was in um, Indianapolis. <sighs> now, um, you know, you're, you, you don't just help animals at your sanctuary, or I'm sorry, at your facility that come into there. You also are sometimes asked to help with other facilities. And you've been recently asked to help with Onslaught Rehab in, what is it, South America? Yes. What happened there is a lot of times people get these kittens when they're little and they want to play with them. And then when they get to be adults, they can't deal with them any longer. And they'll turn them over to a wildlife um, sanctuary. And in this case, what they're trying to do, it was a youngster that they had. And they're trying to make sure that they keep the ocelot as wild as possible but it has to be in their hospital for a long period of time. And I don't know why, but um, 
I've seen what happens a lot of times in South America is they don't have the money to feed them meat, and so they'll feed them corn and stuff like that, so they're that's, often in very bad condition. That's because they so, read on the back of those things made of cornmeal, like the cat food things. Yeah. So that may be why the cat has to be in the hospital. But at any rate, they said they wanted the cat to be wild and not be playing with people, but they wanted to give the cat something to keep the cat entertained so that it's not just bored out of its mind and start any kind of um, self-mutilation. So our, uh, our education director, who also heads up our enrichment committee, wrote them a wonderful letter of all the different kinds of things that we do for ocelots to give them those ideas to do for this ocelot. And I actually posted it on our, our website. If you go to bigcatrescue.org and search for ocelot enrichment, you should find that article. And we also were just recently asked to speak at an uh, international conference that will be <coughs> about taking care of the animals in a sanctuary, cats especially in a sanctuary, and how to run a sanctuary, how to be financially responsible and train people well so you don't have accidents like these that we've been reading about. And then there's a national conference as well, the Global Federation of Animal Sanctuaries and the International Fund for Animal Welfare are teaming up to offer a conference on how to, how to run a proper sanctuary, and we've been asked to speak at that as well. So lots of exciting stuff going on in those arenas. Wow. Well, you know, you're one busy lady. We're just always busy here. And, you know, one of the things that um, I, we kind of skipped over that really is indicative of the huge problem out there with people having these animals is that on June the 20th in Charleston, Indiana, there was a, a couple who said that they thought a bobcat was pestering their domestic cats and dogs. And so they sat up on the roof of their trailer looking for what it was, and they saw something moving in the dark one night, so they took a shot at it heard it scream, went out to see what they had hit, and they had hit a leopard. A leopard? Leopards are native to Africa and Asia, not to this country. So what's a leopard doing running around Indiana? Oh, guess. It got out. Yeah. <laughs> and it was just a baby. It was only nine months old. Thank you, cat breeders. Thank you. That's amazing. It's so you know, sad. Well, that stuff makes you feel terrible, but... There are certain things that make you feel good in life, and sometimes when you diet, it can make you feel better, at least psychologically. So, Carol, you're doing a show today, so you must have lost a pound. I didn't. I didn't. Okay. Stop All the right, we're off. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That means you have to lose two pounds next week. I am struggling with this. How could really you not lose a pound? I mean, like you were sick and everything. Lord, you got to get pneumonia or something lose weight? <laughs> oh my God. I don't know. Oh, wow. Well, I think maybe you're not... I'm not getting the exercise I need. It's like every day I have to be out here at the sanctuary for one thing or another, and I don't get out to get the exercise. And by the afternoon, it's raining because it's summer, so I can't rollerblade in the rain. Oh, you said because it's... Oh, <laughs> she needs rollerblades in, in like paradise. <laughs> Oh, you have the greatest life in that aspect. Um, uh, does it rain in the, in the afternoon all the time in Florida? All the time. That must be cool. Is it just like a light rain? Like a quick no, rain? it's like thunderclouds and lightning. And oh, really? it's just like the whole world is coming to an end for like 20 minutes and then it's gone. And it's like that every, every afternoon almost? Uh, during the rainy season, hurricane season. And wow. what happens is when the trails get wet, they get super slick. So even though it doesn't last very long, I can't blade on them. Wow. I have a stair stepper at home, so I'll probably just need to start doing more of that during the summer if I'm going to keep the show going. Wow. Last thing I want to be sure everybody knows about is next Monday is our bingo night at, um, at uh, bingo. Hamburger Mary's. Yeah, yeah I'm going to say Big Cat Rescue. <laughs> Big Cat Rescue at Hamburger Mary's. That's going to be fun, and I hope you take a lot of pictures, and for... People will, or might not know what that is. Hamburger Mary's in E. You're going to the one in Ebor, right? Yes, Ebor City. So Ebor City in Florida, which is a really nice place to visit. There's a place called Big <sighs> Hamburger <laughs> yeah, Mary's. Yeah, doing that too. <laughs> <laughs> this place there called Hamburger Mary's, and then this. What, what day is it again? I'm sorry. It's going to be Monday, which is July the first at 7:30 p.m. Okay. They ask that you make reservations, so you need to call 813-241, just like a two-for-one drink, 813-241-MARY right. to RSVP. And what are some of the prices that you're having? 
you supply prizes, right? We do. There's going to be 10 bingo games, and there'll be a winner for each game. And we've got 10 gift baskets that we're putting together oh. that'll have things like um, tour passes, a bottle of champagne. Um, I got some really cool bandanas for yeah, people. Yeah. Jamie's got some great cat themed items. You know, I know Carol. It'll be stuff. a great basket. I'm serious. Because Carol's like a high end type of personality. So, you know, she, she, you're going to have really nice. Go there. I'll go just for the basket. So go there and try to win the basket. Seriously, you'll have a good time. And you'll be helping animals in the, in the long run. Like, that's a, that's a night to go out and do good for the world and have a really good and do good for your own life. And our main prize is going to be one that you can scan a QR code with your phone. Uh -huh. If you download frontflip.com, we talked about this on the last show, right. um, and you scan the QR code that night at Bingo Mar at um, Hamburger Mary's, then you could possibly win a iPad Mini, 16 mm. gigabyte Wi Fi. Which, which we can and use here to show the app. <laughs> That's awesome. You're showing the app. Or, or, or yeah, no, or. Um, there's the app. <laughs> oh, here, if we can come back to her, she's going to show us the app real fast. So there's um, the app. Yes. And then if you, you win something, it it'll bring it up like that and it'll say, like, I just won a free four piece chicken nuggets with Did the you? purchase of any drink at Wendy's. Can I get that app on uh, Android? Yes, this one is Android and iTunes. Okay, and I'm going to download that today. Uh, right. We're going to be putting these QR codes on Facebook and on our website, too. Front and you flip. can scan once a day. And every day you can enter to try and get that iPad. But there's also a lot of other prizes. So even though you may not win the big prize, mm -hmm. you'll win things like we have a logo bracelet and T-shirts and all kinds of cool stuff that we've got so that it'll be automated. You just... Scratch. The, it's like a little scratch and sniff thing. You scratch your phone, and it shows you what you want. Right. You know, and just quickly, uh, well, I have a little bit more time here because I was just a little bit shocked. I don't know if I was shocked, but whatever. Um, that there is a thing with lion bones and tiger bones that are, are like, traded or sold. Yes. What is that all about? What the hell are you going to do with a tiger bone? For millennium, the tiger bone wine has been one of the, the most prestigious ways that Chinese people would flatter an important delegate or... It's also dog-eating week over there, by the way. So what? It's like dog-eating week over there in China right now. Oh, gosh. I know. I don't even want to go into that because that would make me cry, so whatever. So now they've poached almost all of the tigers out of the wild, so they're starting to use lion bones. And what's happening is oh in South Africa, there's this company called Avaz who does a petition that you can sign. If you, if you type in avaaz.com um, into, right. the, into Google, right. you'll find their petitions. But anyway, they had this, this big campaign where they were showing that the government was allowing these animals to be farmed and shot in canned hunts and used for tiger bone wine and the government started ripping down all of their posters and so Avaz has now sued the government for in violating their freedom to speech and um, I thought it was an excellent article you can see it in the show notes about how you know most of the time when you sign a petition all you're really doing is just helping somebody build up their database right but in this case this organization really went after the government to try and stop some of these abuses you know, I don't know what it is with you China people. Okay, I love all countries. I'm not racist, prejudiced, or anything ist. Okay, but I don't understand your mentality for wanting to do this to these animals. When there's plenty of activists in your country that is against this stuff. It's not like there's no education and you don't know that. So right. Stop. It's certainly not all Chinese. It's a very small people, small group of people who are making a lot of money off of this that are right. trying to promote it. Right. And they use the 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 uh, guys. Is that the right word of what I said earlier in the show? That it's in our history. We've been doing it for a thousand years. Been right. making that tiger wine for a thousand years. Probably two thousand. Well, who gives a shit? Yeah, Seriously. that's why we have no more tigers. Exactly. Thank you. You and your wine. Go have a freaking drink. Stupid ass. No. Oh. You know, and then finally, one last thing. You can get a credit card with a tiger on it. Right there. That's what it looks like. And we have a picture of it. If we could show it. Dear studio producer. 
I, I think, do I have a picture of that? It should be a tiger. It says, life, his life is in your paws. Oh, well, anyways, maybe that's just, maybe that's probably not even in the show notes. It might have just been an ad. Well, anyways, if you do get that credit card, 1% of it helps him. Yes. So, go to, was that supposed to be in the show notes, or is that just at the bottom of the page? It's just at the bottom of the page, oh. um, but it's something that we really do want people to do, because if you get this credit card, like you said, 1% of Killer your purchases go to the cats here at the sanctuary, and it doesn't cost yeah. you anything to you do it. So, if you're going to be right. shopping anyway, you may as well be supporting the cats while you do it. Right, and there's like, and there's like really like close-ups on some of these. So, th the thing is, it's all about appearance, right? So when you pull out this card, it's got a big old wonderful looking, beautiful feline on it. People say, where'd you get that card? And then you can tell them about Big Cat Rescue and you all know this. You all know the thing. People ask me all the time about it when they see it. They're like, oh, that's such a beautiful cat. And you can pick a lion, a tiger, or a leopard. So I don't know how it is that Carol, because Carol is one that gets all of our notes together and all that stuff. I don't know how she's able to format a show to be one exact hour, but she does. <laughs> So. You just know when to cut me off. <laughs> uh, excuse me. Well, you know, I think I know how to pace a show or something like that. I don't, I don't know yes, how I know do. how to do it. But, well, that's it, everybody. That was Cat Chat. And, and you know, it's true about, see, I feel better. These lights made me feel better. I feel, I'm happier. I did my light therapy today. I talked to my good friend Carol, and I talked to you, everybody, and I educated you about stuff that you may not have known about, or else I reminded you about stuff you already know about. So thank you, Carol Baskin, for joining us here at Cat Chat, a Life show about good. the Big Cat Rescue. And coming soon is Wild Animal Television on Roku. Just, you know, that's, that's coming wait. very soon. But you know, now that we got that all, our Roku thing figured out, pretty nice. I'm so excited. So, okay, Carol, we'll go ahead and let you hang up. And uh, everybody, I'll talk to you next Wednesday. Bye. For why, for another Cat Chat at 12 noon Eastern Standard Time here on Wild Animal Television and our sister station, K-Life Television and Justin TV and Mondo Club. Goodbye, everyone. Bye. <laughs> Wild Animal <laughs> Television. And he'll go to that beautiful Wild Animal Television. Any moment in time. Like the white one or the black one? Oh, I, I, you can go to the white one this time. Or that one's cool. Cat chat. <laughs>